Now, the A&E original movie. I'm not sending a bunch of fresh young kids to die for people they know nothing about. I'm asking them to die for freedom, and they're ready to do it. And that's why they're heroes. Tom Selleck. Ike. Countdown to D-Day. Let me put this another way. If I am not given complete and unfettered command of this situation, you can, if I may put it politely, sir, take this job and put it where you choose, because I'll have damn well quit. My other generals say it is unwise. Too much responsibility for one man. Then find other generals. Even your own other generals say the same thing. Then I'll also find new ones. I know who we're talking about here, Prime Minister. Your Air Marshal Harris, my General Jimmy Spatz. The RAF and the U.S. 8th Air Force want to fight their own war. When it was strategic bombing, they think... I know what they think, General. And it is very seductive. Continue the saturation bombing of the continent until the enemy has lost his will to fight. Leave him defeated and dispirited before your invasion force even sets foot ashore. If there's a shore to set foot on. That kind of bombing would turn Paris into a soccer field, Holland into a swimming pool. You were an infantry officer, Prime Minister. We both know wars can only be won on the ground. America did not send a million of its finest men to stand by while faceless aircraft destroy the Europe they're willing to die to save. And I don't believe you rallied the British people to fight on, alone, all these long years to bear so much, only to see the great cities of Europe become heaps of rubble. We have to do more than liberate Europe. We have to save it. We're soldiers, you and I. There can only be one commander, one conductor of this orchestra. One supreme commander. In the air, on the ground, at sea. Or face inter-service bickering, clashing egos, conflicting operational deployments. One invasion, one commander. <clears throat> A sampling of this morning's editorial contribution. As the Allies prepare for our greatest challenge of the war, our leaders must not lose sight of the true measure of military leadership. The victories of General Montgomery at El Alamein, Sicily, and every campaign he has undertaken deserve prime consideration. His hand is never far from such forward momentum as we have enjoyed in this war. No other general can make that claim. I could go on, but uh, they're all much of a muchness. I don't deny Monty's achievements as a field commander. Whilst you can make no such claim. Oh, come, come, General. Don't take offense. We're too close for that. Monty's not the man for this, and we both know it. Far too in love with his own image. There is no shortage of men who would like the title Supreme Commander, or even a part of it. And I, we, must identify each man and decide whether or not he is fit. Harris. Are you oblivious to destruction? Certainly not, Spence. <laughs> Too flamboyant. Marshal. You know FDR won't let him leave Washington. And Mount Batten is commanding in the Pacific. Then who? Your own Mr. Roosevelt 
has his doubts about a supreme commander. I leave him to you, sir. You'll be able to set him straight. <laughs> no human in history has ever held the power for which you now ask. Not Caesar, not Alexander, no man. Ever. But this is Eisenhower you're considering. Is this relatively untried American the right man for the job? They're popular with the men. Irrelevant. Properly disciplined soldiers fight at the leader's command, whoever that might be. My victories against Rommel that brought us back North Africa weren't won because I was popular with the ordinary ranks. No, I dare say. Randy? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Forgot your <clears throat> strict scruples. General, let it not come as a surprise to you. The decision is as good as made. There will be no turning back. Eisenhower is to be supreme commander. That is the consensus of the Allies. I see. Politics first, is it? Yes. Yes, Chief Whip. Time to prepare for the afternoon question period, Prime Minister. One last thought, Prime Minister. There's more than one way to skin this cat. Let things remain as they are. Let Eisenhower be the de facto figurehead. Just don't formalize it. Leave some room for the rest of us. Oh, I'm sure you'll find some way to maneuver, General. You know my admiration for your soldiering skills. There are two kinds of problem drinkers, Chief Whip. Those who drink too much and those who drink too little. I believe it's a religious thing with the General. Strict Methodist, I think. Uh, might be an asset. The way the odds are on this thing, we could use somebody on close terms with God. Private audience, you could call it that. Man's a pain in the ass. And a megalomaniac who's got his own ideas of how to win this war, and he'll never accept you. Ike, I admire Churchill as much as any man, but not even he could sell that bill of goods without some sticking in the craw. Churchill's not there to sell. His job is making decisions. Mine is to make them work. Yeah, well, you're tough enough to make it happen. Even with the very generals and admirals he offended. Well, I'm glad you feel that way, Brad, because if we foul up, we'll end up sharing a planning and supply desk in Washington. <laughs> You'd lose your operational rank, then take away three of those stars. Remember 38 in the summer? Yeah. Careers had stalled. We figured we'd be passed over and mustered out within a year. As colonels. Yes, as colonels. So we'd still be ahead of the game. Now tell me about the tanks in the sand. Those beaches aren't really sand. They're pebble and rock. Your three o'clock meeting is here. You're unfriendly friendly. I'll slip out the back. Needlessly timid, if you ask me. And I trust you are asking me. Of course. That's why we're here. For a frank discussion, just you and me. Good. Then I will be frank. Like all battles, this one will be won on the ground. But not necessarily by infantry men, one foot at a time. Armour can slash through first, leaving infantry to consolidate gains. But that requires a flexible master plan. We might find a sudden lunge across the low countries, a dagger.